So after I trimmed those to size, I drew diagonals from my corners to find center, and then from center I used my compass to make a circle of about what I think the bottom foot should be. I didn't want to get too skinny because this is for a bed. You don't want too much of a point here. Um, it could snap off. So the compass, I put it at three quarters of an inch, which gave me an inch and a half circle. And then I measured up. I think I want this taper to start around six inches. I believe I said that towards the beginning. And now I'm just gonna start knocking down my corners and start making this circular. I have the first one um, mounted on my workbench. The three tools I'm using for this are a drawer knife, um, a small plane, and kind of a jack plane. These are the three ones I usually use. You could, and the easiest way to do this would be to throw these in a lathe and just taper the ends that way, but I have a lathe. I never reset it up after I move my shop because the spot it was in is no longer existing. I think I'm going to mount it over here, but I don't really use a lathe a bunch, so it's kind of sitting there until I have a big project for it. Number two, I enjoy using hand tools. Um, I've done circles like this before. It's really not that hard. And number three, the legs for the headboard are 60 inches, and I couldn't use my lathe for those anyway, so I'd have to use hand tools regardless for the top, so I might as well use them for the bottom so they look a little bit uniform. So when I get to about this point, when there's about a quarter inch around that circle left, I think now I'm going to switch to the hand planes. Maybe use the draw knife a little bit, but kind of start smoothing this out with hand planes. So I'm pretty happy with the shape so far on this. I took it right down to the mark on my circle. So now I'm going to use my little hand plane and just smooth it out to get it to just exactly where I want to be. And then I'm probably going to smooth it out with my belt sander. Those are my finished legs, and this is the photo I was working off of. Now, this whole leg is rounded, so it might look a little different, but in general, I'm pretty happy with the match for there. Um, my camera dipped out while I was sanding these on my belt sander. I just mocked this up in a vise upside down so I could use both hands to sand stuff. It was basically just to smooth everything out. Um, and then I used the palm sander on it a little bit. These are still a little rough. Once everything's mounted in together, it's actually easier to sand it because the footboard will hold it together and I won't have to use my hand to hold it and I'll fine tune it then. But um, 
these are, I think, officially done. I had my palm sander out. I kind of went through and got rid of most of my pencil marks and lightly sanded it just because once that piece of ply was in there, it's going to be a little bit harder to get all those marks off and I don't need any of them anymore and it was just kind of getting confusing with all those marks. The only mark I have left is this one that goes across both of them and that mark tells me I got that mark by measuring off of my side rails and what this is going to be is where I'm going to put the runners across the side rails for all the slats while well, I'm also having one going through the front for stability but also I'm going to try and utilize it to straighten out that piece of plywood so on top of this mark is what's going to sit my three quarter inch slats so this mark coincides to the dimensions for my bed which means if I put my plywood in here I can measure on my plywood the dado I need to cut out so then accounting for the thickness of my spline I just tossed my leg back on and transferred that mark on either side of my plywood I'm going to route uh, put my dado stack in here to make it go quicker I'm going to cut a groove in here and then put the piece I have for that in there. I marked where that groove is going to be. It's going to be a pretty shallow groove. I just want a little more gluing surface for this, um, this runner. And the material I'm using is some red oak that I got pre plain pre-jointed from the hardware store. I didn't buy enough cherry to make all these. It's actually cheaper just to buy these sometimes because you don't have to mess with them. They're super straight. And I'm just going to stick those in there. The ones on the side rails I wanted thick, it probably doesn't have to be this thick for the front piece, but I just bought three of the same ones. So I'm going to run this over my stack and probably take two, three or four passes. So I don't think I pressed record for that last one, but this is the basic groove you're going to end up with. It ended up only being three passes, but I went over each one a couple times. Because of the bow in this plywood, you really have to push down on it so it's flush to the table. And you want to make sure that your dado is the same all the way around. I set up this glue up pretty meticulously because I think that's the only way it's going to go smoothly. I have four things to glue onto here. The veneer on the bottom, the spline, this piece, and the two legs. But I'm going to break it into two glue ups. I'm going to do this piece and the spline and hopefully that straightens it out pretty good. And then I'll add the legs and I probably won't even add the bottom veneer until tomorrow. Um, I'm going to glue this up go make and eat dinner and then come back and see if it's dry enough to add the legs. So what I did was I leveled two 2x6's on my table saw top. This top isn't perfectly level because my floor isn't level. So these 2x6's are perfectly level. I laid that um, bowed top on there and clamped it down so it's perfectly flat. I'm hoping that because I'm gluing these pieces in there when it's flat when I take the clamps off it won't kind of pop back into shape so then I went through and I found my center line on this board I marked it and every six inches I countersunk a screw hole with these inch and a quarter screws which are scarily close to being too long to go through my piece then I'm going to put some glue on there and sink those in and then attach the spline and that's a pretty snug tight I might put some tape on it to hold it in place. I opted to let this whole thing dry overnight instead of putting the glues on it, uh, the legs on it. And the reasoning for that is because I think commonly people think that if you just screw something, or even when I added the spline, it didn't really take the bow out of the board. But I think people think if you just screw something to it, that it will um, 
go back into shape. The problem with that is, is if this wasn't attached to that 2x6, even if you screw something to it, if the bow is strong enough, it will bend that, bend that piece of wood. Um, the reason screwing stuff, like if this was part of a cabinet and you could screw it to another structure that's already structural, like the top of a cabinet, that works because you have something straight already holding it together. But if you're just screwing something to the existing piece, it will bow with it. So I wanted to make sure that glue was good and dry, and even though it's summertime, it's so humid, there's so much moisture in the air, everything's drying much, much slower than it usually does. So the theory with this is, is since it's, it's um, flattened on a surface and glue was added as well as screws and these splines, in order for this to bow back into shape, it would literally have to break that glue joint. So I'm going to take this out of the clamps. Hopefully that theory holds and we'll see how straight it is. Then probably add the legs. I pop this out of the clamps and you could see it's really quite straight. There's a little kink at that one end, but I actually believe that that is my spline. You could see I cut this oversized, so I didn't have to worry about it being perfectly center. Before I put the legs on, I'll go through with the hand plane and just trim it down so it's flush. But it's that bow is definitely gone. And you'll be able to tell right away if it worked because as soon as you take those clamps off the edges, it didn't pop back up. The edges were sticking up because of the bow in the middle. So now that this is done, I'm going to attach the legs and probably let that dry the rest of the afternoon. Um, it's a Friday, so this weekend I'll do similar things to the headboard. You can see the bow and the headboard's super similar to the footboard. And the nice thing about the headboard, which is something I keep saying, is if I have to, I could put a structure on the back of it. You'll never see it, and that will make it easier than trying to cut a spline in the top of this huge piece of wood. The bottom I don't have to mess with because it's sitting in that groove and that's flat. You can see where the bow kind of starts to happen towards the top. But um, I probably will not film that just because it's going to be a similar process, attaching all the pieces, drilling the holes in the legs um, for the footboard. still have my original mark that shows me where those legs should sit so I'll know if they're full on and I kind of have it floating in space here so I'll be able to gauge whether or not those legs are square just by looking at it. Um, you also want to make sure, as stupid as this sounds, that the right side's facing in. There's the mortise I made for my side rails. If you glue these on backwards, it's really going to screw the pooch. I'm not going to film a ton of this like I said, but I wanted to show you I'm about to glue up the headboard. I'm going to do the same thing since it works so good on the footboard. I'm going to glue this bottom piece into place, and then since this bet, this side's going to be against the wall, I could kind of get away with just, I have a thick piece of that cherry left, and I'm just going to attach that to the top. I don't have to cut it to size so it'll fit in between my two legs, and then once this is dry, I'll attach the legs. And like I said, I could get away with this because it's on the back. You won't see it. I couldn't do that with the footboard because you'll see the whole thing. And hopefully that will work. But I did show you before I took this apart the bow in the top of this headboard. And you could see that by putting this on the table flat, how perfectly that takes out the bow by clamping all these pieces in place on top of a level surface. I had to use two 
I had used three 2x6s, and the 2x6s are leveled on the top of my table. I have shims, um, I have shims underneath. The whole thing's level on perpendicularly. And so now I can glue these pieces on. So this is where I left things yesterday. Um, yesterday was Sunday. So I came out here and I flipped this over and I attached the legs. I did it the exact same way I did with the straps. But um, it would have been much harder to do this one standing up on edge. So I laid it down. And as I build, I like to kind of... I call it double checking myself just to make sure everything's lined up and working. So the nice thing about this one was since these were level, you could tell if these are going to be flat, if there's a gap here. If these were lifted up or down, you would see a gap on either side. So automatically you could tell that they're flat by no gap. Also before the glue dried, I put my footboard on top and I made sure that the legs still line up perfectly with each other because if these legs weren't perfect then when you go to put your side rails on your bed won't be square and potentially your mattress won't fit in there. So little things like that will automatically tell you that everything's working out fine. Things I'm about to do to the footboard I've already done to the headboard. You can see it's over there um, with the veneer taped in place. I actually put those um, ratchet straps back in place on that headboard after I moved it just because when I looked in the mortise holes over there there was still some wet glue and I don't think that the whole thing is wet I honestly think that there was just a puddle in the mortises that didn't dry overnight but just to be safe I put those ratchet straps back on so that it can't move